welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Just Minding My Business. We hope you had an amazing day. And coming to the mic today is Robin Anitris Christian, who is the founder and CEO of Anitris House Incorporated. And their, their mission is to provide a safe and loving home for young women 16 to 25 years of age who are faced with homelessness aged out of the foster care department of juvenile service system or have been forced off of college campuses due to entering their second trimester of pregnancy. Wow. Robin has an extensive background in providing services to the community from working for Baltimore City Child Support Enforcement to Virginia Beach Law Enforcement Robin's career took a rewarding turn when she began to work with Hearts and Homes, uh, which is a mother and baby program as a foster parent. Well, welcome, 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 Robin. Hello, ladies. How are you? I am wonderful and so happy to have you on the show because you know I always say you are so anointed. With Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yes, indeed. So... Anitra's house. Mm -hmm. Beginnings. (laughs) (laughs) Anitra's house. um, I started working on Anitra's house back in 2010 when I became a foster parent. Um, I had so many girls that entered my home from 2010 to 2017. And they are all, all, everything that they went through was all the same. Either they aged out of the system, had nowhere to go, ended up in a shelter with their child on their 21st birthday, or they went on to try to do um, higher education, weren't able to complete because they still didn't have the, the support system that they needed to be able to do so, do so or the resources to be able to um, complete their education. And that's how that vision was given to me. And um, I'm so glad that I followed that vision because it is so rewarding and it touches my heart because it is my life. That's my purpose in life. And that's a wonderful purpose to have, to be able to help other people maneuver through life. I mean, there's no, there's no price you can even put on that. Right. So... So tell us basically the process in which Anitra's house, you know, with your women, how how does one get get into your program? So we're we're word of mouth. They'll either come through colleges, like we've been in contact with colleges around Baltimore. Um, My foster care girls um, talk to their friends. So it's just one girl telling another girl. Um, programs that are familiar with us and they contact me, see what we can do, what, what services we offer, if we could take a girl, that kind of, that's, that's how, that's our way. And we're not um, listed somewhere and people are calling off of a list. That's not, that's not how it's working. Okay. So, um, so what does it look? So once a girl comes into the, the um, program, what what else happens? What what kind of structure have you provided for these women? So the first thing will happen is they will fill out an application and then I'll take the application to my board members. We discuss the application, we meet with the young lady and we talk to her because this is not just a housing program. We are designed to help a young woman who is trying to pursue either her college degree or her trade certification, complete her education, 
while also giving her the tools necessary to be able to maintain without relying on public assistance. Public assistance is not a bad thing, it's a stepping stone. And we want them to be able, want them to be able to have the knowledge and the resources to be able to maintain without having to keep dealing with the system. People want to get involved with what you're doing mm -hmm. and support you. How do they go about doing that? So we have a website. It's anitrashouse.org. And Anitra's House is spelled A, N as in Nancy, E as in Edward, T as in Thomas, R as in Robert, I as in Isaac, C as in Cat, E as in Edward, House, H-O-U-S-E dot org. And the website spells out what we do. It gives our email address, our phone number, our donate link. And if they need to contact me, they can always call me. My number's on there. Um, and there's also um, a section if they just want to need to send me a message. Okay. Okay. So um, some of the women mm -hmm. that have gone through your program, mm -hmm. um, what, where, where are they now? Moved on in life. So we are looking forward now to moving into our 2020 season. Um, and that's what our fundraiser is for, to get ready for our next session. Okay, so tell everybody about your fundraiser that's coming up. The fundraiser is October the 26th from 6 to 9 at the beautiful downtown Cultural Arts Center located at 401 North Howard Street. Okay, and what, what, does that, what is that going to be about? So it's a spoken word fundraiser. So we'll have spoken word artists from around Baltimore, Common Love. Um, we also have Shepworth Bentley. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple of raw, uh, raw performers that are new on the scene. So we have a great, uh, we also have Bria McCormick that's going to be there. She's a great young artist in Baltimore that's, that's doing really a really good job. Um, she's going to also be at our event. The event is only $50. It'll cover um, the entry fee. We have food and wine and the um, performers. Oh, okay. All right. That sounds wonderful. That sounds really interesting. Yes. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. That'll be really, really nice. So the women that have gone through your program, the 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 teaching and the and the resources that you provided these women, mm -hmm. have they been able to continue to sustain? Back and forth. So we have the once they're done, there's two years that they have to come. They have the the opportunity to come back to us to get whatever they need to help them be able to put what we teach them into everyday life. Mm -hmm. So we do parenting classes. Mm -hmm. We also do um, financial literacy. So if they are working and they have bills and they haven't quite learned how to take their money and budget it to pay the bills and be able to sustain through the rest of the week. That's, they have the opportunity to bring those bills back to us and let's sit down and try to work things out. They have to take counseling and they have a life coach. So they still have a full team available to them once they move on. Oh, okay. Okay, that's awesome. So one of the things, um, Robin, when a woman comes to your program, mm -hmm. what type of mindset are you seeing on, you know, I know it varies from, from girl to girl because everybody's situation is different. But yeah. can you just give us some examples of some of the mindsets that you have to work with? Um, the biggest thing is just the fear of the unknown because because we are a housing program, but we're a, hope, a program that's strictly designed for young women who are pursuing either their college degree or their trade certification. So they have to maintain a 2.5 GPA in this program. And it's just making sure that she understands that, that she has to go to school. Um, she has to do the counseling part and she'll have a life coach with her along this ride. 
to help her through the whole process to make sure that on the, at the end of this, she comes out stronger. So most of the women have to be either pursuing uh, an educational track or mm -hmm. want to pursue an educational track. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to understand because I'm sure some of them aren't already in school is, is what I'm trying to distinguish. No, but they're on their way there. Okay. Okay. Right, because they have to be in the program. They have to be in in school in the program. Oh, okay, okay. So that's that's um. Oh, okay. That's awesome. So now, when the oh, go ahead, Ru. Um, one of the questions I have, as you get to know these young ladies, because you interview them, you know, they have their resume and everything. What are you finding are some of the chief characteristics of the ones who will succeed in your program? Determination. They are determined to be better than where they come from or better than what they've gone through. They don't want their child to go through what they've gone through. They don't want their child to see the things that they saw coming up. So they're in that fight to be the best person that they can be and just to make a difference because they want to have the opportunity to give their children the best. Okay. That's motivation and reason to be determined. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Break that chain of events. Yeah. Can I ask you also, do you find that in, as you learn about them, do you find that they have come, these young women have come from a similar circumstance? That's how they were raised? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we all follow generational, um, I call them generational curses. Because they are things that have come from grandma and that have come from her mama, and they just have not been changed. Times have changed. The way things that are done has changed, and you have to find a better way to make a difference. You can't keep doing the same things over and over again. And this younger generation is looking for that. That's encouraging. That's very encouraging, the fact that they're looking for different alternatives. They are. People are under the impression that these younger generations, they don't want anything, they don't want to do anything. That's not true. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are not trusting of adults, and I get it, because adults cross them. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. So you're going to ask them to come in and trust an adult that they don't know? No, it doesn't work that way. You have to, you have to earn their trust. It's like they have to earn your trust. And it, it's a two-way street. But once they realize that you are for the betterment of them and their child, it, it's fine. All right, right. right. Mm, so it's a trust thing. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that's with all the kids because they have been lied to by adults. Mm -hmm. You know, just like adults have, you know, I think, you know, and they just feel some kind of way, you know, and they don't really know how to release that frustration or that hurt and one thing that you'll learn or they've learned from going through counseling is she's only your mother's only done what she knows exactly it's like her mother's only done what she's known what she knows mm -hmm. so it's just generation after generation after generation so you have to change what you know i think that's such a that's a powerful statement yes it is change what you know or what you have been taught to believe is true. Right, because if you've been taught it from your mama and your grandmother, it has to be true. And that's the way we were raised. Yeah. Right. So not exactly. necessarily so. As the song goes, it ain't necessarily so. Absolutely. <laughs> to see beyond that now and say, ah, well, they did the best that they knew at the time. They did. But they that's right. And at that time. And, and that's time. the whole key at their time. These yeah. times, those times are gone. Times yeah. have changed. Mm -hmm. This young generation, yeah. they are smart. They are really smart and they're sharp. But you have to give them the opportunity to show that and not, not every time they say something, shoot them down. Let them talk yeah. because they're smart enough to mm -hmm. make the mistake or correct the mistake. But you have to let them talk it through. Right. And I think one of the best things we can give to young people is to remind them, especially the older generation, is that you are actually say to them, you are allowed to make mistakes. You mm -hmm. are not perfect. 
there's nobody in this mm -mm. world that's perfect. So you are allowed to make mistakes. However, what decisions are you going to make about the mistake that you've made? What, are you, mm -hmm. what is your determination now? Are you going to stay mm -hmm. there and wallow in it? Are you going to use it as an excuse? Or are you going to use it as a stepping stone, literally a building stone that mm -hmm. you can step on and build your life from it? Because there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. It's but they can be a powerful building block for the rest of your life. Mm. Amen. Yes. Yes. And they have to also understand that, you know, adults make me want to continue to make mistakes. It's, mm -hmm. life, it's a lifetime process. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get it right, you mess it up. You get it right, you mess it up. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> And it's a lifelong learning process. Yes, it is. Actually, those are the things that create your life and make your life more powerful. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. you can share with someone else. These young ladies that you're working with, they will have the opportunity to say, well, this is what I did, mm -hmm. but I had this opportunity. And this is what this opportunity, because I grabbed hold of it, led me to. And they right. can talk about how it wasn't easy. You know, right. that's the purpose mm -hmm. of our lives. Our lives are almost like a teaching platform for other people. Mm -hmm. Whatever we experience individually can benefit someone else. And, uh, and don't be afraid to share that. That's the thing. Don't be afraid to share with them the dumb mistakes that you made because you made mistakes too. And I don't want them to think that, you know, just because I'm an adult, this doesn't mean I didn't do anything in this world. I, I got this far. I know what you're going through because I did the stupid things too. Right. There you go. <laughs> and thought we were having a good time while we were doing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you look back and you go, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? What was I dumb? <laughs> and you know, sure. it's so interesting because we have, um, as we look back into our families, uh, I grew up with that generation where everyone pretended to be wonderful. Right. But then when the cousins get together and they're all different ages and they start talking, they mm -hmm. start asking questions. It's like, you know, do you remember this? And this right. doesn't make sense. And you start putting right. pieces of puzzle together and you're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> all that they appear to be. <laughs> And you know, right. you giggle about it because you know you really did have this sort of larger than life, almost perfect picture of some of the mm -hmm. members of your family. But the bottom line is that no one was perfect, you know, and that is such a relief. Yeah. You know? So these young ladies too, as they look back and they look at their parents or their grandparents and aunts and uncles, they can say, okay, you know, they weren't perfect, but I no. have the privilege of knowing something and learning something different so my life mm -hmm. can be different. That's mm -hmm. very powerful. Very, 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 very. Now, let me ask you one question, uh, Robin. When these women um, leave the program, do they reach back and help the other uh, women coming in? They always offer that. They always offer the opportunity to, well, if I'm free, can I stop by? If you're home, can I come over? You know, they, they, they do that okay. because they want to stay in contact with you because that's the person, that's the one adult that they have learned to trust. They know that person that has their child, their interest in their child's best interest at heart. That's what they want. That's all they want. All right. Yes, yes. So this event that's coming up on um, October the 26th, yes, uh, I know it's a, a fundraiser, but the proceeds, how will that be um, uh, used in your program? So everything, every dollar goes back into the program, whether it's for the, the classes, the, the parenting classes, the um, financial literacy, the healthy cooking, um, time management, time management is a, a so important. That is a big piece of life, not just this program, but it, how to incorporate, incorporate time management into your life. Um, it goes into the 
um, paying for the expenses of the home for the young women and caring for the home and for the program. So every dollar goes right back into the program. Okay. And what an awesome um, initiative to support, you know, helping, because if you help a mother and a child, that's helping. You just never know how that's going to trickle down. I mean, we really need to think about it this way. When you're helping a mother and a child, you're also keeping the child out of the juvenile system. Mm-hmm. If this is it's nothing but the circle of life. If the mother is better, the child can have the opportunity to be better. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the best way to look at it. You said it. So, again, um, the event. I'm just excited about the event. I love the spoken word. Uh, can you yes. tell us uh, some of the the people that are going to be on your on your um, event? Can you give us a little bit of background about them so people can kind of know, well, get an idea as to what the event is going to uh, be about? So we have Karma Love, Karma Love has been around on the scene for many years. Um, she has. She also has an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Shepworth Bentley is a big name here in Baltimore. He also has a huge following, he, and he's also on Instagram and, and um, Facebook. Bria McCormick, that name uh, is so big in Baltimore. Uh, Miss McCormick has a, a big following. And um, she's on Instagram and Facebook as well. We also have a mother and daughter duo, um, Miss Diana. She has a, a daughter. Um, they're doing a piece that people really want to hear. And they're going to be surprised at this young lady. She's she's awesome. Mm. So the 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 people that are coming my councilwoman PNC bank you know these these people are people that have been with us from the beginning and um have seen us grow so it's going to be good to see some of them again i haven't seen them since last year and it's going to be good to see them in the house again so i'm really looking forward to this and even if people can't make it to the event and they just want to donate they can also go to the website to donate because this cause will continue. We have, we have people, I have people calling. I have young ladies calling. I can't help them because we really need to grow and expand into a, a larger facility. So, I mean, we're not wasting any time. The, the more we can grow, the more, the more we can get funded, the more we can grow. And I just ask people to, Look at, look inside yourself and see if you were living on a campus, you are a young woman on campus, you got pregnant, campus sends you a letter saying you are now entering your second trimester of pregnancy. You are a liability to this campus and you have to leave. Mm. That is traumatic. Yes, it is. Because now you cannot finish your education. And now if you're out of state, if you're from out of state, you now have to return home pregnant. How embarrassing is that? Mm. So, I mean, there's a, people, a need for people to expand their minds. Let's get out of the box because things that are happening are not just within that 18 to 21 age group that people seem to favor. There are young women, 18 to 25, who are trying to do things with their life and trying to better themselves. All they need is a chance. Yes. We just, they just need an opportunity and they, they want to do something with their lives, but without the community to support or the financial place to do so, it's not going to happen. Give them the chance through a Nitra's house. We're here. We're ready to help them. I heard that. I heard that. So again, what's the day? Tell everybody the, the date and where to go to get tickets and all of that for the event. So we are on Eventbrite at Anitra's house. They can go through they can go through Eventbrite or they can go to our website, which is anitrashouse.org, and pay through our donate link. They can um, call me. <laughs> My number is four four three 
833-733-7506. Or you can also call 443-432-5118. Okay. We're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. So they can reach me no matter no matter where, no matter what time. I'm always available. All right. All right. Well, we can't wait. Uh, we also have it posted on all of our social media platforms uh, okay. under Sister Circle Empowerment Network, uh, Ascend LLC, and it's also on Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and what's the other one? And LinkedIn. So we have it posted there as well. So please, 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 please help these help. A nutritious house help my moms with children continue their education and you know just be a blessing to their child and the world because that's what it boils down to you know they're able to finish their education whatever they are going to school for is going to trickle down to the community so it, it, it's a dominoes effect Mm-hmm. It is. Wow. Well, and Miss Christian, Miss Robin, you know we always love having you on this show. And uh we would definitely um support you in any endeavor that you're doing. And you know, I always say you are the anointed one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Miss Ada. I really appreciate you, Miss Ruth. Y'all have always given me such encouragement, and I really appreciate that. You're welcome. You're, welcome. You. Sure. You're very welcome. You deserve it. <laughs> yes, you do. You definitely deserve it. I know God is smiling all, smiling at every. <laughs> <laughs> well, he also knows where I come from because he knows my walk, just like I understand these girls. So he knows that I understand them a whole lot better than they think. And who you probably had that walk just for, right. for this purpose. Exactly. Amen. Right. I always feel like um, my life has come full circle mm. from being a young mother, um, having my children getting married, having it, 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 my whole circle is my whole life is come to this. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's an awesome feeling to know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome feeling. Well, we thank you and we love you and everybody October 26 at the From six to nine. Okay. And it's at the arts cultural center. Yep. Downtown cultural arts center at 401 North Howard street. Okay. It's on the corner of Howard and Mulberry. Okay. Okay. Very All good. right, well, we'll see you in the house. Okay. Word on the street says there's something new at Just Minding My Business Media. You've heard our podcast, Just Minding My Business Radio, that brings news and views you can use. That airs every Thursday at 6 p.m. on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and Spreaker. Well... Now you can watch Just Minding My Business. That's right. Just Minding My Business Media now has a TV presence on Raven International TV Network, broadcast on Roku, Fire, and Apple TV. Your business, through Just Minding My Business Media, has exposure on Internet radio, major social media platforms, and now TV. Through Just Minding My Business, dynamic digital marketing platform. Don't listen to the word on the street. Hear it for yourself. Visit jmmb.assistercircle.org to learn how you can take your business, your vision, to the next level. Thank you to the amazing women of a Sister Circle Empowerment Network, Ascend LLC, and our media partners, let Just Minding My Business Media promote your business. For information, visit us at jmmb.assistercircle.org. That's jmmb.assistercircle.org.
tascircle.org. Voiceovers by RCH Voiceworks. For when you want to be heard, call 443-620-4115. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.